Hi, I'm Philip Mayer. Let's talk about proximal insertions of the rectus femoris. The rectus femoris muscle has three proximal insertions. The direct tendon, short and bulky, inserts on the interior inferior iliac spine. The indirect or reflected tendon, longer and thinner, inserts on the lateral side of the acetabular labrum. These two tendons meet at approximately 2 cm below the anterior inferior iliac spine to form the conjoined tendon. The recurrent tendon, which is inconsistent, has its origin to the capsule with the iliofemoral ligament. Described as a fibrous expansion, it merges with the deep fascia of the gluteus minimus. He is rarely seen at ultrasound. The thin and flattened myotendinous junction of the direct tendon sickens the superficial aponeurosis of the proximal third of the muscle, particularly so in its anteromedial part. The fibers of the indirect tendon, posterior components of the conjoined tendon, take the shape of a comma and form a conjunctive sagittal band, then continues up to the distal third of the muscle. There is hence not one rectus femoris, but two, formed by two muscles intertwined with one another. A proximal tubular part centered by the sagittal ridge located at the anterior two-thirds of the tide, surrounded by a peripheral biarticular muscle. The patient is lying down in supine position, foot in neutral rotation. We will use either a superficial probe in adolescence, for example, or a probe with a slightly lower frequency in the more corpulent subject, or a matrix probe with frequency 18.4 MHz, for example. The examination begins with an axial section on the inguinal foldon, which we will locate the coxofemoral joint. Then. By the classic technique of the elevator, we will go up until falling on the bony relief corresponding to the anterior inferior iliac spine on which is inserted the direct tendon of the rectus femoris muscle, this direct tendon continuing by the superficial fascia of the muscle. Once the insertion has been identified, the probe is rotated 90 degrees, which will allow a sagittal section of the tendon and its emphasis to be obtained. At this level, about 2 cm below the insertion, we highlight the anisotropy artifact, which corresponds to the crossing of the indirect tendon. A good sign of rupture of this indirect tendon is the disappearance of this artifact. To explore the insertion of the indirect femoral tendon, which is inserted on the acetabular edge, we start with an axial section just under the anterior inferior iliac spine. We then perform a lateral translation of the probe towards the greater trochanter and, with small up and down movements, we will highlight the indirect tendon of the rectus femoris which appears hypoechoic because of its orientation relative to the ultrasound beam. By widening the field of exploration, we find the continuity of this indirect tendon with the sagittal central aponeurosis of the rectus femoris. Once the direct tendon has been identified, we will perform a 90 degrees rotation of the probe to explore it in its minor axis. Here again, we can use small movements in the orientation of the probe, which makes it easier to spot it with anisotropy. The tendon is located on the surface of the joint capsule and more precisely of the iliofemoral ligament and the labrum. To finish, we start again from the insertion of the direct tendon on the anterior inferior iliac spine and, by the elevator technique, we will start towards the proximal and anterior portion of the thigh. We find the muscle at this level, which is well formed of two parts, a central part with the sagittal aponeurosis, which is a place of many tears, and a peripheral part coming to include the central part. Below you will find the three large muscles, vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, and vastus intermedius.
One of the most common lesions is focal rupture of rectus femoris sagittal band. On axial ultrasound exploration, the lesion present as a central pseudomass, white arrows, surrounded by an edematous hypoechal ring, white arrows heads, with blurring of the sagittal band, here small arrows, it's the classical bullseye's appearance. It's the sagittal section that reveals the interruption of the central fibrous band. Small yellow arrows. Superficial peripheral myoaponeurotic lesions are uncommon. On the axial and sagittal exploration, there is an echogenic sickening of the superficial aponeurosis of the rectus femoris, white arrows, in continuity with the direct tendon. Proximal ablution of the rectus femoris are uncommon in adults. In case of a partial injury, lesions of the direct tendon are more frequent and have a high rate of functional recovery. On the sagittal ultrasound section, A and B, centered on the anterior inferior exact spine, the direct tendon, arrowhead, appears to be thinner, small arrows, above the myotendinous junction, thick arrows. On the diagonal sagittal section, C, the indirect tendon has a normal morphology. In case of a complete injury, there is a progression of lesions that start at the level of the indirect tendon, then of the direct tendon, and ultimately of the conjoined tendon, leading to a tendon retraction that may require surgery. Ultrasound A and C show a complete lesion of the direct tendon, white arrow, with an interstitial lesion of the indirect tendon, arrow's head. MRI confirm the lesion of the two tendons with a bald aspect of anterior inferior iliac spine. 